All right, our third and final lesson in calorimetry, heat transfer and phase changes. Phase changes are when substances change state, solid, liquid, or gas. When an object reaches its boiling point or melting point, it will absorb heat, but its temperature will not change until the phase change is complete. All right, let's look at this diagram here. So we have solids, we have a liquid, and we have a gas. To make this simple, I've done this for uh, only for water. Now, when a solid goes from solid to gas, heat's absorbed. When uh, a liquid goes to a gas, heat is also absorbed. And then finally, when a solid goes to liquid, it is also absorbed. Now, reversing this, uh, let's say a, uh, a gas condenses to a liquid, okay, heat released. Same thing when a liquid turns into or freezes to a uh, solid, heat is released. And then when uh, uh, gases go to uh, solids, heat is again released. But this doesn't really happen with, uh, with water. Water always goes from solid liquid to gas. Um, uh, assuming normal atmospheric pressures. Now, the last term, L. L is the latent heat of a substance. So very similar to specific heat capacity, this value tells you how much heat is necessary to change the phase of a substance with a given mass. So every different substance will have a different L value that tells you, okay, I have a certain amount of mass. How much heat do I need to add to actually change the phase? All right, here's the formula that you need to know. The formula is Q, the amount of heat equals mass times the latent heat of transformation. This is the only new variable here. It's L, latent heat of transformation, and that's given in kilojoules per kilogram. It's an amount of energy per mass.